Hey guys, Marshall from Going Gear Shot Show 2015 in Las Vegas. We're here again this year with Robert Pelton, founder of DPX, and he's going to tell us about their new knives. I'm really excited because they make some very cool knives, some really nice innovations for the industry. So uh, you ready to get started? Let's do it. Let's do it. So this year what we've got is uh, we've rounded out the center of our line, which is uh, we take the heat platform, which people might be familiar with. So this is our smaller folder. Um, this is, is in comparison, this is what the, uh, the HEST, the DPX HEST looks like. So the heat is a smaller blade, uh, but it's still got a pretty meaty handle. And then we take that platform and we create fixed blades. And the fixed blades are made uh, in Michigan by White River. Uh, they actually cut this maple tree down and found out that it had a beautiful tiger stripe in it. So these, line, these knives are going to have a, a lot of hand craftsmanship in it. They're going to have a lot of interesting choices in uh, micarta or G10. And then we're also taking our familiar Hest fixed blade line and uh, doing the same thing. So you'll see a US made product. Yeah, it's going to use S30V steel. It's going to be made in Michigan and it's going to use the beautifully finished wooden micarta and you know, various uh, I guess heirloom handles, if you want to call it that. What kind of sheaths are going to come with those fixed plates? Uh, we'll do leather for the hunting knives, and we'll do kydex for the uh, more tactical knives. Can you tell us a little bit about the carbon fiber on that little folder? Yeah, yeah. So one of the things I like is uh, finding new things. So we always go out to people who make laminates and uh, woods and find things that uh, work well. Uh, the limitation we have is that our knife design actually uses the G10 as half of the uh, frame. So it's got to be as strong as the titanium. G10, of course, is lighter than titanium. So we're working with a lot of people that do weird and strange things with laminates, which is essentially things mixed with epoxy. But we also do interesting finishes. So this is an Elmax blade, which is a very high-end steel. Normally it comes out as a beautiful, shiny silver color. We PVD coat it. Actually, we sandblast the blade first, we PVD coat it, and then we tumble it quickly to give it sort of a low print, low profile. So what you have is a kind of like going out in the town knife on the heat platform. Yeah, it's a beautiful look to it. What's the, uh, what's the laminate called? This is a, a crushed carbon fiber. Crushed? Yeah, so you would normally call it recycled, but basically it's all the bits and pieces of carbon fiber put into an epoxy slurry, then compressed. But you can see the depth and the, um, the finish on that. It has a great look to it. That's the first one I've seen in a, in a knife, and it has a fantastic look. Well, for example, we also do a pure titanium version. So this is a, um, a heat with a nylox blade, stone wash, and then a very nice three-dimensional uh, machining of it so you, you lose a lot of weight without the strength, I mean, without losing the strength. And this will patina up in your pocket, so as you carry it, these, uh, this diamond, this very soft diamond pattern will polish up and create sort of a secondary effect. Yeah, when you guys had the limited edition of those, uh, we sold out of them pretty much the second we put them on the website, so I'm really excited to see a production version of it. Yeah, I mean, I like this is the one I carry around to show off to people. But we also have them in left-handers, uh, we have them in right-handers. And this is a, a new knife that kind of perplexes people at first because they see this thing and they go, okay, what is that? This is a patented device we call the HIT, which is a handle inversion tool. And it's a very strange profile for a knife because I use this knife when I travel to Africa. When I'm on the road, I find that uh, even though a knife may be legal, it can be confiscated or taken away from you. And also, I, I need a knife at hand, so I like to keep it on my gear and my pack. So this one is very simple. You simply push forward on the, uh, sorry, I got doing this upside down. You push forward on the uh, thumb clip and it forms the handle and your finger goes inside. So if you're in a vehicle at night or you're doing something where you can't see where your knife goes, all you have to do is use the same finger and close it up. So. That, that's easily my favorite thing that you guys make. I love that. I'll sit around the shop and just play with it all day long. It's addictive. And on top of that, it's a beautiful piece of steel. So you've got a nice heavy piece of S35V steel. And this is almost like carrying around a very high-end razor blade. 
But this is, you know, the best knife to have is the one that you actually have with you. So that's really the philosophy here. The biggest testimonial, testimonial I heard was at a uh, knife show, and there was a guy who had it clipped to his uh, belt loop. And I was like, how do you like that? And he said, the best thing I could say is that I never remember that it's there. Yeah, exactly. So he, he doesn't even notice the lightweight of it and everything, but then when he needs it, yeah, yeah. he's got a knife right at the ready. How's the uh, other blade profile coming? This is the, the one that everybody's waiting for. So when I first did the proof of concept, I, I did a small knife, the hip. And what we've got in, pro in uh, production right now is really what I started with was essentially called a skinner. And the idea being that when you need a knife that's covered with blood and muck and whatever and you carry it in the rain, and you don't need a sheath, you don't need scale. So what this knife does is basically the same thing. It rotates to form a handle. You have absolute control because your finger's in the middle of the knife. And when you're done, you just wash it off in a stream or not even worry about it and then clip it onto your pack or your saddle or whatever you want to carry it on. So these are very strange knives to people at first, but once they play with them, they kind of start thinking like, I get it. This is all I need is a knife. So it doesn't take away from a lot of the beautiful woodwork and the metalwork that we do. It's just a different intent, different purpose. Exactly. It's a, it's a more utilitarian knife, but it, every knife we make is designed to kind of grow on you, you know, develop kind of a look and a patina. And I don't know if people actually look at our knives, but when you look at the um, actual finish on a knife, you see that these scales match the spine perfectly there's no gap there and then the the rounded edge is what makes it feel so soft and comfortable when you, this is a, a hunting knife we also hollow out the scale so our knives are balanced so in our sear knife this is the sorry this is the dpx hest when people pick this up they're, they're surprised how light it is because it doesn't feel like a heavy knife and on top of that they start noticing the ergonomics which this is a combatives knife as well we actually sit and figure out every aspect of the knife so that it fulfills its purpose properly. Tell us about the big boy. Okay, so my favorite knife, and people said, who's this knife for? And I say, it's for me. Because I've always wanted a high-end camp knife, and I didn't know if you can get it all in the uh, frame. So this is a giant piece of Sleipner tool steel. Sleipner is a machine used in meat processing, in commercial meat processing. So. What I did is I designed uh, essentially a camp knife, so at the end of the day when you need to build shelter, you've got two things. You've got a very thick profile tip, which you essentially use as a hatchet, and then you've got almost 13 inches of razor sharp uh, mach machining steel so you can actually flatten things, uh, make your pegs, make your poles, whatever. And then ergonomically, it's actually set up so when you want to split wood, everything fits in your hand properly. So it's, it's a, it's a well-thought-out knife since I've spent many months in the jungle thinking what knife I actually needed. And it's a very high-quality knife, which is unusual in uh, camp knives. What are you going to do for a sheath on that one? Um, we'll do Kydex and some uh, Cordura elements to keep the weight down. Is that the last one? Yeah, we can, we can keep going, but I think those, that's the new stuff for this year. All right, thank you for your time. Yeah, we have that one, but that doesn't Oh, wait, yeah, we haven't seen that one. Let's take a look at that. So we always... Uh, I always like to skeletonize our products because I find that a lot of professional users carry a lot of gear. So we always try to make the lightest possible version of our product. So we've got a series of skeletonized versions of the heat platform. And that means you can use it as a neck knife, you can clip it to your belt. And it's the least amount of knife you need, but it doesn't actually sacrifice from the original purpose of the knife. It's essentially the same, same knife, but without all the weight. And that's it for 2015. Awesome. Thank you for your time. Oh, my pleasure.